What's going on guys, Chris Conley here, and as I'm getting settled in Houston, Texas, I thought I would try some of the iconic eateries in Houston. And today we're at Burns Original Barbecue, founded by Roy Burns, and great barbecue lives on through his family. So we've been invited here by Gary Burns to try some of the barbecue and get to know the roots of this place here. Let's go check it out. And this is the Con Man Cravings. How we doing? Great. How are you? Welcome to Burn. Good. Thank you so much. Thank hey, you for having me. Thank you for coming by. Yeah. So uh, what we got here? Uh, well, let me show you guys some of these beautiful ribs. Oh man. This is. Uh, it smells amazing. Hey, it, it, it tastes Woo! amazing. And it looks amazing Let's too. Open the other one up quick. There you go. Wow. This this is one of out of all the smokers that we have. That that is just what an entrance. Yeah, we wow. This is big boy. That's awesome. Yeah. Come on in. Let me show you guys. All right, let's go. It's gonna get a little hot and smoky in here though. Love it. So this is this is our main cooker right there. Open wow. those doors up. Marcus, open those doors on that side. This Ooh. this is basically where we cook everything on this pit. We do beef, we do ribs, we do chicken, we do baked potatoes, we want the barbecue sauce up. As you see, we don't even have a cooker in here, no stove. We cook on this and we cook all our food on this back of this pit right here. Wow. Everything we do is cooked on the back of this pit. And what I understand is this isn't the original pit. This isn't the original pit. The original pit actually was brick, same size brick. The brick, the bricks now are underneath that. We kept the brick. This thing has a shield in it. It's hollow in the bottom. So and everything is in here. We rebuilt this pit round by 15, 20 years ago. Wow. This is this is right this there. is our main cooker right here. Yeah. When we load up in the morning time, this is where everything starts. And then from here it goes to here. Come on in guys. Everything that we do back here is cooked on the back of here. Once we lay, once we get this our merchant our food started, the beans, the potato, uh, the green beans, we put everything on back there and cook. Wonderful. Wonderful. This here, this pit in here, come on in guys. We have company guys. This is my this is my beautiful team. The, the, my beautiful my beautiful team is in here. This is our smoker. This is our warmer right here. This is where we do all the serving from. You got your ribs. You got your links. You got your beef. This is Darnell, one of the young men been with us for over 40 years. Uh, so this is this is where it happened. At from here they they they, they would take and make the sandwiches. The young lady would wrap them up and then we'll shoot them out the window. Beautiful, this is where the magic happens. Everything happens, we do baked potatoes, we do some everything here. We try not to leave nothing. This, and then also, this, what we do on this here, when we got a, when we got a heavy crowd, we, we keep these as backup warmers, at a camera that you keep it on here. But this is, this is where it started at. Also, this was a brick pit. Yeah. This, this pit was brick, but it wasn't made on this style. It was square, and it, and it stood a different way. But as time got, Worser and, and these pits were leaking all into the bricks. They had decided to rebuild them with steel pits. Steel pits are more safer. Be oh, I'm sorry. Steel pits are more safer because the way this pit is designed, if this thing was to catch fire, we shut the door down and the, the, the stack goes all the way to the top. So it, and, and it's got it has five bricks all the way in there. This pit been here for a while and done, and done a, do a real good job. Come on up this way. Let me show you guys. Up this way is where the young ladies be, where we do all the serving. This is where our registers are. We got a beautiful team of people up here. Also, watch your step. Uh, this is where they do the serving. This is where it all happened at when we start to make the orders, get them on our side. Let's get ready where I can prepare you guys some food. I have my guys fix you up something. We're going to sit out on the patio and let you guys enjoy this delicious barbecue. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's go. This place is this place is really amazing, and I know that there's a lot that goes on here with family and legacy. Mm -hmm. So, so tell me a little bit about that. This family's legacy. Well, my dad started barbecuing when I was a very young man. He'd come home on Friday nights, have his pits in the backyard, barrel pits at that time. Had put his briskets on, put his ribs on, sit out there all night long while we in the house, going out or wherever we was going. He'd still be there putting his meat on Saturday mornings. He'll wake up, take his meat, put it on the back of his trailer drive to these little different areas in the neighborhood. He started at, started over here on West Montgomery in Little York at a, at a shell station. He started work doing that over there. People kept 
you know, running him from that area, you know. Then he'll move down, he moved down to the road down on another area, on another, you know, West Montgomery. We, he sat there for, he sat there for about five or six years. People ran him off and finally he come over into a sister yard. All this land over here is owned and operated by the Burns family. Uh, this, ho this home over here, this Burger Shack, which is now Burger Shack, used to be my auntie's house. So we, we converted it over from when she passed away, bless her soul. When she passed away, we took and made it into a burger shack. This this building over here, Dad, the house was here, Dad built this building. The first part he built was this first section right here. When he built this section here, he was out here cutting his meat up. He'll run in there, cut his meat up, get taken to the inside, cutting this first section right here, bring it and give it to his customers. His business kept growing, people kept coming and coming and liking the business. You know how people support one another. Roy, his name was Roy. Uh, Roy, your barbecue is good. They continue to support him. Then we built another section on. All this whole building is, is not built by blueprints. It's built by his mind and his imagination. How it's he built by legacy. That. Built by legacy. The old man took, we once had in there, in, inside this building right here, we used to have brick pits in here. Now we have steel pits in here. Steel pits was before he passed away, about 10, 15 years before he passed away. Uh, he always had a vision of, uh, wanted to make sure this place was gonna be able to support his family. Those who wanted to come in and work and wanna work, uh, it was there. It's still here for all family, people and kids in the neighborhood that wanna come and get a job. We we don't turn nobody down. We, we, we're, we're hire you, you're gonna work. Uh, you're gonna learn discipline. You're gonna we gonna discipline you in here. If not, then we won't. You know, we'll we'll, we'll tear ties with you. But other than that, we've been we're in the neighborhood for the community, and the community in the neighborhood for us. Oh, so beautiful. it's been it's been it's been a long journey. I've been with Dad for oh going on 25 years or so. After I was working for a place for General Electric, also was a distributor, and then I started working for my dad. Then I have other family members in there too. That's been here for a long time, and then also. The, along with the the process of that, he there was a this this place this area right here that we're sitting on right now. This was not here. All this was was just all gravel dirt right here, and he had a little old shed that he built here. Let his customers come in and sit to to enjoy some of the 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 the, the, the outside breeze, and then eventually we we built this place over here. This place, all this area here, also was built. When uh, Anthony come over here, your Anthony and Bart ain't visit us. Yeah. Uh, back in early 2000, that's where my dad was living. They sit out on, sit out here and talk. Had a good conversation. Uh, Anthony come back once before before he passed away. And you know we've been we've been been here ever since, man. I every morning I wake up and every day I look at this place and come up. I, I count it as truly as a blessing. You know I look at it as being the Lord gave us something to stand firm on. We have to continue to stand firm and make it happen. No matter how the weather stands, people come against you, this and that, we still stand firm. We don't, my dad legacy was, son, don't y'all worry about nobody else, only worry about your product. You might ask me now about other barbecue places in Houston, I don't know, but I only did, I only deal with Burns. I don't, I, all I can tell you, they have a good barbecue. We don't compete, we don't criticize, we cook, our, we cook our stuff. That's how we was born and raised. And you know, dad was a good man and hey, just a good time to Well, it definitely sounds like it. And I can see, I can see the legacy. I can see the legacy by the people who are coming in and out and who are ordering food and, and how popular and how busy it is and how the community has embraced you and you've embraced the community. Mm -hmm. But you know what? At this point, I've been hearing about the legacy. Now I'm ready to taste it. Well, now I'm ready me, to taste uh, it. Let me go in and have my guy to prepare you guys up some meal. I've mixed a little rib, a little link, a little sliced beef, uh, beans, potato salad. Uh, dirty rice, you know, the, the whole nine yards. So. Now what we have here, you have your ribs. Ooh. This is a regular link we use. This is a spicy link we use. A little lean beef and a little hot top beef. Ooh. Um, we, 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 a lot of people call it moist cut. This is a spicy link made by French's, uh, French's Link Company. They're, they're, they own and operated, uh, family owned and operated. This is by B&W Meat Market, which owned and operated, family owned. So, you know, we got, we got, we tied in with plenty uh, meat companies that family owned and operated at the, in, in Houston for the community, working with the community. So, previously, 
I played football in Kansas City. And Kansas City, they make a lot of barbecue. Okay. And so a lot of people ask me it, what, what I like more, Texas barbecue or Kansas City barbecue. Mm -hmm. But this is the first Texas barbecue I've had. Oh, is it? Okay. So to me, this is the best Texas barbecue there is. Okay, okay, and I, and, and it, it, is. Is. It, it is, it is, it is. It is. Yeah, it is. We, uh, like I say, once again, you know, we put, we put a lot of time and effort into it da daily. You know, we, we daily we, uh, we we do the same process daily every day. We come in, put our links on, put our briskets on, this put our ribs on. Uh, we don't. We don't wrap up no meat, no fall. Only thing we wrap up is the briskets in the morning time to let them warm up to stop them overcooking on us. But other than that, um, everything is wood smoked. So you don't, you don't put any timers on on your meat. No, no time. You just know exactly when your food is know done. Know when it's ready. That's the only time that these here. Right here. And instinct. You know, you look at. I'm able to look at. I'm able to look at the meats and say, hey, you guys pull this meat out. Yeah. You know, once I touch it with that fork, my ribs, I can look at them, tell them when they're done. The links, I can look at them, tell them when they're done. The uh, brisket, you put the fork in, and if that marble in is real, little tender, you know, and then the lean is, is firm, you're good. A lot of times you can overcook a brisket too, uh, trying to get it too tender. When that marble in is falling apart, that lean is going to be a little bit more falling apart too, you know, so you, you want to you wanna kind of bring them in between. But then, you know, uh, when, you, when you're dealing with a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of people down in, 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 in North down in Texas down there, they like to eat that, that brisket that's going to be real good and falling apart. Uh -huh. So we, but we cook it, you know, whichever way we're going to, we cook it in and out the way the customer, like if customer come to me and tell me, hey man, you guys need to try this. I don't take it as a form of criticism. I take it as a form of help and go and say, guys, let's do this this way because the customer said this. So your customers always, always listen to your customers and they'll tell you which way you're going with yourself. And they'll tell you when you got mistakes being made. You know, uh, one thing I learned in being in business a lot, when you listen to your customers, you listen to your employees, when they work for you just because I'm a, a business owner and barbecue owner like that, don't mean that I know everything. Once you got a crew of people that work with you a amount of years and your customers come your amount of years, they start to tell you how to, you know, how your meat are. You know, hey, this meat, what, something's wrong with the meat. You got too much seasoning on it. You don't have enough seasoning. So then you listen to those and then you go back and tell your staff, hey, a little more season on it, take some of the season off. Community you know, effort. Community effort. Community effort. It, it takes that. And the more you, the more you listen and, and reach out to people and the customer, the more they'll reach back out to you and they'll start to, you know, bring you out. One, at one while, when, 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 when my dad was living, we didn't do no advertising. All our advertising was done by word of mouth. And we had a tremendous amount of customers, which we still have now. Well, I can know. see why. Yeah. I can taste why Okay. right now, because this is phenomenal. And like I say, the wood we use down here is a post oak wood. We use only post oak wood. We do mix it with pecan in the wintertime. Uh -huh. Pecan burns hot. We help it, it helps us fire pits up. But when we mix it with pecan, Dad used to call you, it's, it's a hickory taste to him, mixing the pecan and that, and that post oak together. We mix it with red oak. Red oak helps start our pits up too. Anytime when when it started to get around the winter time and it's wet, I get a, I keep a load of dry wood back there. So when my guys get in at six in the morning, they gotta have wood to have, you gotta directly get it directly in here and crank the pits up. If you're trying to start with a green wood because you want to get smoke out of it and you cooking by you, you're gonna be all day and you're not gonna meet your destination on time. I don't know how much you cook, and you're not gonna meet it because that smoke gonna be trying to get through that wood and sap coming out of it. So when you start with a little dry wood, mix a little green wood on top of it, it flavors it out, then you start, your pits start to cook like one big oven, so a little smoke, a little heat at the same time. Yeah. Art, it's art right there. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for okay. uh, giving us a chance to try this. Okay. We got the food truck that uh, we keep on the road. We got vans going. This, this thing here we do, uh, the city has supporters where we do a thousand meals a day for the city, because uh, we got crews all over the place. This is our, this is the post oak wood that I was telling you guys that we only burn. We'll get a load of it in, uh, keep it piled up over here, have our wood trucks coming in uh, daily. That's, the, that's red oak, this post oak. This, this, I just want to show y'all mother pits right quick, how we load them up. 
So when I say we cook for the whole community, you know, so we do massive amount of cooking. That is amazing. And we got, you know, massive amount of pits to handle what we do. We got, like I say, we got a good crew that comes out and these young men know how to go and handle things and make it come out the way we need it to come out the way we want to. It's a lot of time and effort put into it, but at the end of the day, it's rewarding. And uh, it's educational at the same time. So this is it. This is the Burns Establishment. That's awesome. So you're Thank good. You so and anytime you in town, stop by. Be more than happy to. Friends, family, uh, just, you know, just stop by. Ask for Gary. Got to try. I'll, I'll be here. here. Got to have it. OK. Thank you so much for allowing us to come here and tour your establishment. You know, I, I got one final question for you. If there's something you could tell the community that has supported you guys all these years, what would it be? I'd like to tell the community, thank you. The community have been here and supported us for over 40 some years and still still supporting us. The Burns Furniture tell the community we love them. And uh, we just thank you for all, for all the support out all these years. That's awesome. Well, thank you and until next time. <laughs>